All right, people, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to make this video as quick as possible. I'm talking about three companies, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's talk about Microsoft. Okay, they going to go first uh, between the big three, and they're going to extend their show, in which this that's a good sign. Uh, so, yes, by them saying they're going to extend the show, that means that they got more games to show. So, the more games, the better. That's what they've been lacking on these past couple of years is exclusives. They've been basically relying on multiplex, in which I can buy on my PlayStation 4 right now. And the multiplex is going to run a lot better, and it looks a lot better. So, that's one thing that Microsoft really messed up at, because not only PlayStation has a lot of... Um, they got the, all the multi-plats, uh, all the third-party support on their console. They have a lot of exclusives that separate themselves from Microsoft, in which Microsoft is lacking. It's in the first-party department. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, Microsoft is extending the show. They got more games to show for us. Uh, of course, they're gonna they're gonna show the Scorpio, that beast of a console. I'm really excited for Scorpio, especially for the. Um, the most uh, recent news they gave to us about them unlocking the extra gigabyte of RAM, in which that's really, really cool. This thing is really competing with a lot of mid-tier PCs. So that's really saying something. If this price is $400, in which it's been rumored, then Sony has a lot um, uh, to catch up as far as the specs of the console. But like I said, I'm not just going based on power uh, if this uh, E3 going to be a, a, a success. They also have to shop the games. If they got games on top of a most powerful console ever, lots of games, then I will say Microsoft will have a successful E3. It's all about the games. All about the games. Yes, I love the fact that they're coming out with a really powerful console, but at the same time, I want to know what games can I play in which I cannot play on my PlayStation 4 or my Nintendo Switch is all I'm saying. So like I say, it's all about the games. They need more first party games. They need more first party studios. They need to stop um, running off their developers because it seems that a lot of developers is leaving the Microsoft team or they just um, making games for other systems. You know, the games that in which it, they used to make exclusive for the Xbox, they're going multi-plat now. Like Remedy, they make games for PlayStation as well. So you know, they got a lot of they got a lot of stuff they need to do to, to fix the situation that they have in the Xbox Studios because it's it's just not looking good. So hopefully they can you know have a redemption E3, show us a lot of games and you know I, I know they're gonna probably spend maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes just explaining how the Scorpio works, but I really want to I really want more time investing. On games that is the main reason why we watch e3 it's because of the fucking games okay let's go to Nintendo okay how can Nintendo win e3 <laughs> okay I guess so uh, these past couple of weeks uh, just with Nintendo it's just been kind of a, a roller coaster it's just been uh, some pull your hair moments and of course we got some good stuff uh, but um, my main concern is the the time frame of um, Nintendo's E3. Uh, it's like 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. That's, that's not enough time. Um, I, I even complain about their digital event only being 45 minutes, and they just trimmed it down to 30 minutes. That 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 right there is it doesn't doesn't sit well with me, especially if this is you know Switch is a brand new spanking console. It just came out in March. March, March of 2017, not 2016, not 2015, 2017. That's not about what three months ago, and all they got is 30 minutes. Only way that I can see that this could work is that they showing a lot of trailers in which what they did um, a few months back at one of their directs in which it was fast paced. I liked it. So if they could do something similar with this E3, have a fast paced. Uh, E3 showing lots and lots and lots of games, quick trailers. Then that's I can understand that. But if they're going to sit up and talk about one game for ten minutes, I would be I would be pretty pissed. If this is a um, Nintendo E3 2015 situation, <laughs> I will go on a huge rant, and y'all will know how pissed off I am. But you know, just with all the rumors and speculations and everything, I think this might be a fast-paced um, E3 for Nintendo. They're going to show a lot of stuff in a, um, a little amount of time. 
I don't, I don't think they're going to spend five, six minutes on one game just interviewing developers because that is a waste of time and they don't have much time in that time frame. Uh, so I really expect some some surprises. Even though Nintendo did say they're going to focus on mostly this year, but I want to know what is Retro Studios cooking? They've been they've been on download for these past few years. What are they doing? Like we I know we've been hearing some rumors for a 2D Metroid, a Metro Prime 4, lots of rumors. Uh, Retro Studios has been hiring a lot of people these past few years, and still we we don't know what the hell they doing. Like they have to say something like <laughs> this is nintendo's first e3 with a brand new console I, I feel that they need to prove to the world that nintendo is ready to compete again and just you know wash their hands from the wii u situation and i feel that this e3 for nintendo is very very pivotal i know they got their own nintendo directions i know that but this is this is one thing I I don't agree with some of uh, some YouTubers. Yes, I know they got their own directs, but E3 is the most pivotal moment for video game companies because that's when the whole world's watching. That's when you you have more cameras, more media attention, more journalists. Everybody is there to watch. The whole world is watching. That's all I'm saying. Nintendo directs. That's only for mostly Nintendo people, but with E3, you get Nintendo people, you got all the journalists, you got everybody all around the world is watching. Like hell, Microsoft, I believe they're going, um, they're going back on Spike TV, so they gonna be on TV. That's why Nintendo needs to basically um, do something different in which they've been doing in the past. Like if they can do something similar to the Robot Chicken, remember the Robot Chicken um, theme they had? I thought that was pretty cool. Just be a little bit fast paced with it. And just show us surprises um you know we already know the games that's coming out this year show some games that's uh, coming out next year so we could be not only happy for this year we could be happy and look forward to next year i don't want to do, i don't want to depend on a nintendo direct for you know games that's coming out in 2018 that's basically where I'm coming from because if Nintendo only focuses on this year, then what games are we, are we gonna play for January all the way to June of next year? Are we going to look forward to some Nintendo Directs for they so they can show us these brand new games that we don't know about? E3 is the best place to show off your games because you got more attention. That's all I got to say about that. I know some people go to disagree, but it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, okay. I guess I'm done with Nintendo. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get this on. I'm trying to do this video as quick as possible because I, I, I really was gonna do like 20 something minutes, but I'm kind of in a hurry. So basically, let's go to uh, Sony. Okay, Sony, they, um, in first place, they selling with 60 plus million consoles. They beating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> I don't even think they need to worry. But just because I said it, just because I said that Sony don't need to worry does not mean that they need to be relax you know basically be on cruise control they don't need to be on cruise control they just need to keep doing what they're doing you know they did not already prove to us that they are the kings of video game consoles because the sales uh, show it uh the sales of the console show it and you know and the playstation brand is a household name it, it is what it is um you know i've been you know i've been brand about sony's past uh, couple of years but actually this year i i ain't said nothing I ain't said nothing because I have games to play. They shut me up. They have so many great exclusives, uh, groundbreaking, uh, critical acclaim exclusives, and I'm just enjoying my PlayStation 4 right now. They got so many games. I just can't keep up with all those exclusives, and that's I don't want I don't want Sony to slow down. They need to keep on coming with these exclusives give us a release date on spider-man days gone um uh release date on uh what's the other game i know the last of us yeah we not be getting a release date uh, i don't even, i don't even think we'll get a release here because whenever they showed us that that trailer during the playstation experience there was that, that trailer was basically in early development so i don't really I'm, I'm not um, expecting a release date on Last of Us 2. They might show us another trailer, but I don't expect no release date to maybe E3 of 2018. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe 2018. Uh, so, yes, I, I'm still excited for Last of Us, but it's a long way ahead. And Death Stranding, we don't know when it's coming out. They're not even going to show up at E3. Death Stranding or Shenmue 3. 
in which I'm kind of bummed about Shenmue 3 because I thought we was gonna get something something about Shenmue you know you know they done got they got so many backers they done raised a lot of money and you know it was like two E3s years ago when they they uh, went on stage and basically um, announced that it would be a Kickstarter to help fund for Shenmue 3 in which it was a success it broke Kickstarter records the fans have spoken and two years later we don't know nothing and I don't know what the hell is going on because if you support Kickstarter then I don't know what to say because uh, Kickstarter it can be good and it can be bad um, yes yes it's been a lot of times that people got ripped off with Kickstarter project cars for it uh, for example, um, a lot of people that owned the Wii U was really excited for Project Cars uh, at first. Majority of them was Wii U owners, and they really wanted Project Cars for the for the Wii U, and that was the most anticipated uh, game in which the um, the gamers wanted to play was on Wii U, and the backers was mostly Wii U at the time. Then as soon as they got the little money, that's when they pushed the Wii U to the side and put it on Xbox One, PC, PS4, and they mentioned that they gonna put it, they gonna put you know the game on Nintendo's next generation console. And here we go with uh, Nintendo's next generation console. Project Cars 2 was announced, and there is no Switch version. So yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't support Kickstarter. I'm just being honest. I don't support it because of bullshit like that, man. So, like I said, that's, that's your money. You can do what the hell you want to do. Uh, but, yes, I'm still kind of salty with this uh, Shinmu 3. I am kind of salty because I want to know when is this coming out. They got their money. So, what is taking so long? Uh, but, you know, like I say, it is what it is. I, I'm just, I'm still kind of pissed. But, let me go move away from Shinmu. Okay. Um, <clears throat> like I say, Spider-Man, Days Gone, God of War. We could get forget release dates on those three games alone I would be so freaking happy so happy and if these games come out this year as well this could this could be one of the greatest gaming years as a PlayStation owner because we had so many great games that we played for this year and I'm really happy and excited to be a PlayStation owner because I have so many great games to play that I played this year and they come out with those three those three games I just named at the end of this year in which we know that Sony they don't really come out with games during the fall because you know that's really that's multi-plat season with Call of Duty or Duties and Destinies and Assassin's Creed and Mads and NBA 2K just all those come out during the fall but I kind of got a, a strong feeling that you know maybe one of Sony's exclusives will come out during the fall maybe one if not then I expect a January release of at least maybe God of War or Spider-Man that's what I'm thinking um, I still want to know what's, what's going on with Detroit uh, was it Detroit become human I think that's the name of it like when's that coming out when's the release date of that so I want to know the release dates of a lot of these games that we've been knowing about for over a year and of course uh, we're gonna get more exclusives like it is what it is like they gonna get the indie support they get a lot of Japanese support like I, I expecting a lot more exclusives for the PlayStation 4 I want to know if are they gonna get a um, a, another groundbreaking game like a Horizon Zero Dawn shown at E3. Like, what is Sony cooking? What are they doing? In order, for, like I say, only um, the only thing that Sony needs to do is just just do, just keep doing what they're doing, and they can win E3 easily. Just keep showing off great games, great games, and great games. Please, no PlayStation Switch. <laughs> please, no place, no PS5. Please, I do not want them to announce that. If they do. I will be pissed. I will be pissed. I just want Sony to show games. If they can win me over with you know more games like they did this year, then I will say they will win this year's E3. You know, same goes with Microsoft. It's all about the games. They whoever got the uh, more games, the better games. You know, that's who I declare the winner. As far as Nintendo, they just need more games and the third party support and stop with all this foolishness with this this voice chat headset debacle and all these damn wires and cables and uh got adapter for an adapter if you got an iphone 7 like it's just a mess over there so only thing nintendo can do to uh basically revive themselves for that shit that shit just show games show games not not only games that we know about show surprises like a metro prime kid Icarus, smash bros just show us some surprises and surprises make a lot of people happy i didn't even mention pokemon a lot of people was pissed off we got a pokemon direct but we getting a pokemon a pokemon tournament game a port and 
a re-release of Pokemon Stars, was it Stars and Moon? Is that what it, what it is? Uh, whatever. No, not Stars. It's a uh, Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon. But the Stars was supposed to be the Switch version. Of course, a lot of people got salty about that. But yeah. Anyway, guys, that's basically all I gotta say. Huh? Fit? Huh? It's been 15 minutes now. Oh, I'm kind of went fast on this. I I was gonna do like a 20, 30 minute video, but I wanted to get this done as quick as possible. But people, that's my thoughts about how I feel about the E3 on how Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft can win. Just got to show games. On Nintendo's part, show games, show us a virtual console, show us Netflix and Hulu. Like, they need to show us the app. You know, we got a $300 console just like Microsoft and PlayStation console cost $300, but they got a lot more stuff. They need to come with it. Nintendo has a lot to prove, just like Microsoft has a lot to prove. As far as PlayStation, they just need to keep doing what they're doing, man, because I'm enjoying my PlayStation. They, they got games I like. I like. They have the games. So basically, that's all we got to say, people. Give me your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section below on how Nintendo, Microsoft, or Sony can win E3. And after that, I will see y'all, hmm, let me guess, tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday, I will be streaming uh, the E3. I will be streaming Microsoft's E3, and y'all just make sure y'all grab your popcorn, grab your drinks, whatever, and come chill with me and Alex. We're going to do our, our show. So excited. I'm so freaking excited. I took off of work Monday and Tuesday so I could do Sony and Nintendo's E3. So like I say, people, uh, come check us out. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do so. I'm always active. And after that, people, I'm out of here. Peace out.